This is Gorma's house. I never did make it back to London because as I reversed out of your driveway, at the bottom of the hill, I saw the shimmering wall stretching across the street and all the way up to the sky. It was a portal and on the other side, instead of showing the roundabout at the intersection of 3rd Street and 4th Avenue in Linden, there was the turn off to the Drakensberg and the snaking river with the half submerged flat top trees. I rolled down the window and drove my sister's car through the portal. Was this real or was I in dreamland? It made no difference. Carl Jung once wrote that when he had been a young boy, he sat meditating on top of a stone and a strange thought occurred to him. Was the stone dreaming him? Maybe this was leopard dreaming, jackal dreaming, desert fox dreaming, and I was just a momentary emergence. Returning to the leopard's dream, the dream of the jackal, perhaps I could undo some of the hollowing out that had come along with the growth of my scientific understanding. If I could be involved in nature again, rediscover my lost identification with natural phenomena, maybe I would not, as Jung said, feel so alone in the cosmos. To extend this further, maybe thunder could once again become the voice of an angry god. The snaking river could again contain a friendly spirit. A puff adder I saw alongside the Drakensberg Road could embody the wisdom of all of nature. A grotto in a rural village could be the home of some menacing demon. As they did to the ancients, voices could speak to me from the mountains and I could speak to them, thinking they could hear. As I drove through the portal, I realized that this was why all those people went to Credo and Mabengu, because their contact with nature was gone, and with it had gone the sense of personal meaning that this symbolic connection had supplied. My father's shrine was a kelp and driftwood, the sticks carved with totems, signposts on the way back to participation, and the mystery of nature.